a Dark Frozen Depths, and this is the show-off part of the crossover event. Now, according to what I know, when you play certain stages on Kami Pro, you'll get coins in order to get rewards for this game, which is Dragon Providence. And I don't know full details on this, but apparently doing stuff on here gives you a list of coins for the other event as well. So you have to do both if you, play, if you intend on playing both games. Otherwise, this is your main focus while trying to do the other game if you're just Kami Pro. But anyways, as you can see, like, I have this guild, which is, um, which I've been placed the leader of for who knows how long, but the guild's nearly dead. But I've been playing this game for a long time, as I mentioned in a few other things, so I've actually had a nice start. As you see, I'm level 190 in it, and I got an overall level 276, which is actually the, um, the combined boost I have. And I have 1.3 million combat capability. That We'll get to that later. Not to mention, my jobs are decent, but they don't, they're not exactly needed. You only need certain ones, if you, depending on what, um, depending on what characters you got in your deck. But, getting to the main thing, this doesn't start for, um, this doesn't start for Dragon Providence until, um, the 24th. So, Kami Hime Project happens to get a bigger, um, a bigger time pool to, for this. But as I said, get different stuff, here you go. Now, getting stuff on um, Kami Pro, you'll get all this this stuff right here. Which is some extremely strong stuff if you can actually um, do some work for um, Kami Hime Project. Five rare gacha tickets, that's self-explanatory for any gacha game. SR or higher, that's self-explanatory too. SSR higher, that's also self explanatory. Now, the SSR Limit Break Crown, if you're playing this game, when you step and get an SSR, you have to get multiple copies. It's, it's the same case for normal, rare, all of them. You have to get multiple copies. What that does is let you bypass it. So, you can get you can get an SSR and also step and get, get them um, one level extension. Now, if you're going for the harem scenes, for the, um, concern that this is an 18 plus game anyways, so, you have to hit the 18 plus side. But, um, if you're doing this and you want to unlock harem scenes, you have to, um, you get one for getting the, the character. You have to get them the plus plus value, meaning you have to upgrade them twice in order to get the second one. And to get the third, you have to get, get them all the way up. Which is, um, getting four copies of them on top of the original. And if it's, um, I'll get to the other one in a second, but it's like, there's a special rarity too, where you, you, it's the same process where you only need five of them in order to fully get, get all the scenes, but they can upgrade so many times you honestly need 21 of them, but, um, you can get another SSR guaranteed ticket with the biggest prize, some more gotcha tickets, some AP and BP potions, I'll get to that a little bit later. And the LR 20% chances. That's what the um, the gotcha tickets are. The LR 20% chance. That means there's a rarity higher than SSR in this game. And that's the LR, which is a legendary. They're extremely hard to get. And they're stupidly powerful. That's something to definitely go for if you do intend on continuing this game. Because for some reason it survived so long. But my guild's dead on it. But anyways... You get two shots to, to get one out of 20% chance. You can get two of them, you can get none of them, who knows. But that's definitely a good chance of getting some. I've got three. So, yeah. But, getting on to this, which is the one you're probably here for anyways. Now, getting stuff on here for Kamihime Project. It says, you get through login bonus, daily missions, elemental battles, and blaze crowd. Now, I'm guessing Blaze Crowd is the event. Elemental Battles is the one where you guys sit up and do the conquest. So, at certain times of day, you have to be able to get on here and do the conquest. In my time zone, I think it's 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. But, um, at least the one that my guild signed up for. But in this case, you have to get a lot of stuff for different types of things. And, I'm guessing there's a special character here, given the 
the last prize down bottom. But anyways, you get a gacha ticket, you get an SR or higher gacha ticket, you get a Kamihime weapon gacha ticket, you get a 10 chain gacha ticket with guarantees of SR, and then it's saying exclusive Kamihime release weapon. So I'm guessing this is the only means of getting this character right here. So we'll see how good they are. Other than that, I don't know. But at the same time, it's like, there's some really decent stuff for both games if you really want to be honest. So I might step in and give it a shot. I played this a little bit in order to try and bump up some stuff. That said, it's time to go see what I've got for my deck. Because there's two decks you get. There's your Conquest deck, which you can get up to 20 cards into there. And all your characters are in the form of cards, basically. And then there's the Raid deck, where you can get, um, seven of them. I don't know what Blaze Crowd is, but apparently I haven't set that up. It automatically sets it up, I guess. Blaze Crowd must be a Conquest as well. I'll have to, um, double-check that. See, Blaze Crowd is totally new to me, I guess. So Blaze Crowd and Conquest got the same one. Anyways... Legendary characters, they start off at level 100, and each additional upgrade gives you 5 additional levels, so they get level 120 max. So, I've gotten a few that's got some strong, strong abilities. They have a frontline skill based on if you're in the front line and you can use it, a, a rear line skill where, where you have to be in the back, and then there's a support skill where it randomly happens. A lot of these support skills are really good because it slows down the, the amount of TP I use, which is um, used in Conquest Battles, and I'm guessing Blaze Crowd as well. Some deal some st stupidly high damage, others do debuffs and all that. Try to focus on getting ones that give you um, attack power increases, because you got magical and, and physical attack. Try and get the ones that give you both. Because it's not just based on the stats of each card, which stack up, and that's how I got the 1.3 million. But it's also based on the, on um, buffs and all that too. But if you die, you lose your buff. So make sure you heal. So if you need to, go in the back line and heal yourself. Anyways. As you can see, I got some SSR too. That's also hit level 100. That means I got four copies of them to get them that, that far. Yet their stats are still kind of lower than the, um, the legendary. That's something to keep in mind. This Ancient Dragon one, you get her automatically. She's stupidly strong and very, very good. But there's others I managed to pull. I got a lot of SSR from the Rare Ticket gotcha for some weird reason. I guess the rates are pretty decent, but the Legendaries are really low to get those chances. And there's some that aren't full power, but they are here. Now here's where we get to some interesting stuff. The GRs. These ones are based off of the, um, the Zodiac, and you only get them from specific events, because you have to do good in the event in order to get the unlock stuff in order to go through their, their stages, but they all have each different unlock items, so that said, you're probably not going to have these if you don't already. But, yeah, I, I got them. They get, they get so many limit breaks that you can actually get them to level 200. They start off at level 100, just like a Legendary. But their stats are lower. If you really want to full power them, you have to get them to level 200. Unfortunately. But they are all pretty good. And then on top of that, they usually have special effects that are based upon the job that you um, pick. Like, if you pick a Warrior job, I know, I can start getting a level 7 fire thing. That means these little fire abilities that um, Taurus has can give me some stuff to help her out on that one. So if I activate a little fire circle type skill, then it'll set up and boost these abilities. But you can only do that once per battle, so be very careful of that one. So you do need multiple people, you want to use them all. Mordred's one. Mordred and Arthur came from special events. These little United Front Battles is over here. I got Mordred, Arthur, and um somebody else from it. But there's another SSR. There's another GR, another SSR, another GR, another GR. If you start looking at my entire card list, it's 
it's insane how many cards I have on here. Let's display them all in the highest rarity and going down. But when it comes to rarities, it's um pluses first and then you go well max then pluses then the normal card. But it goes from legendary to gr the um, GR, which I think is um great rare, I don't know. But um there's my three LRs. My GR10, because she's got the highest breaks. Normal GR, normal GR. My SSR maxes. My triple pluses, my double pluses. You might need to slow this video down if you want to see them all. I'm only going through it really quick. Plus SR, sync normal SRs. And it's the same... Well, SSR, that's what I mean. But it's the same case for these other ones, too. It's kind of hard to move this thing, too. You gotta, like, scroll the mouse and all that. But since I don't have one, I gotta use my touchscreen. But anyways, I got a ton of more SR. Well, SSR. SR Max. And what the post-limit break arcana means is, means is that you've fully broken it. That means you can't extend its max level any further. And then there's some that's just sapping, and when you level them up to that highest point after that, like in this instance it's level 80, you get a special bonus item too, and on top of that they'll also, um, they'll also say something like max increase or something, I don't know. But that proves that you can't get them any stronger, outside of leveling their skills, which is something totally different, it's really hard to pull off. But yeah, you got these, I can go on for days. I still haven't gotten all my osis because of the simple fact that I have, haven't been able to finish the missions before my guild died. I may have to join another one in order to pull that off. And some of these names might seem familiar, like there's Bella, Bo Bella Bo Bog right there. And she's also in the other game, the Kamihime Project. Osiris is in both games too. So they got their own takes on each character, so that's something that might seem a little familiar for you. But this is a lot of characters. I think Nezha might be in both games at some point. Echidna definitely is. But Echidna is a summon in the um, in Kamihime Project. Gilgamesh is definitely in both. I think Metro might be in both. I don't know. That's not Kuchuang. Nodens is definitely in both. But as you can see, I got a lot. And a lot of these just aren't used because they got way more powerful rarities. Undine, Mastema, Baphomet. Like, that's the whole thing with that one. Anyways, you pretty much get the whole point. Like, I'll just run through this last list right here. Kime, Valfour, Moloch, Saturnus. Saturnus is actually in Oshawari Island, which is the the name of this guild, actually. Oshawari Island Dragons, I guess. Hestia is right here. There's like a whole bunch of different ones. I know a lot of these mythologies, that's why I'm also pointing them out. Now, abilities is the one where you gotta level up and all that type of stuff. You got your normal level where you get experience points for just going through the stages and whatnot. I'm level 190. And when you go into each thing, you can sip and spend points in order to start boosting up abilities. What you boost is up to you, but I suggest you get your organized costs and your AP up. Those are definite. You're going to need those. Maybe even a cart max. More AP, more more experience to get, more organization costs, more your deck can get bigger and have better stuff. That's just how it is. And it's also the same case for the raids, too. Because raid bosses occasionally appear where you sip and just start bursting them down. I just focus straight on physical because I don't really care too much on this one. Just go for one of the attacks and just stick with it. Or you can do both. Now in this case, the Zodiac Shrine is what I mentioned before where it's like... 
is only open for certain events, so good luck with that one. That said, you're probably not going to get too many points on this one. Spend them however you think is going to help you out, because there's a lot of them. And I mean a lot of them. They even extended a few. Because I don't remember some of these going that far. But that's why my um my overall level says 276, because I got level 86 and 49 to add on to that 190. And then on the top of that too, when you start enhancing cards and all that, the SR and above and whatnot, you can start getting these tickets right here, which is the um, gotcha tickets. Because you can exchange them in the metal shop, I do believe. Like, say I got 112 medals, I can get two more tickets. This is how you can really rack up a lot of stuff, so... The more stuff you get, the better you are. Like, see, I got two of these. I tend to use them in 10 draws because that usually gives you the best rate for this. Now, you only got a few days as the course of this video to really prepare, but this info can still help you out as you go along. So, that's something to know about. I wish I could show you what the con conquest really is, but it's not available right now. But the revival works the same way. And this is probably what the Blaze crowd is going to be like. Please, I'm going to go with Fafnir 6 star. Because I can take them out like that. Once you jump in, hit update, and it starts. You can only start one battle once a day, and then your participants still lose the, um, their chance to sip and jump in. So it's like, multiple can go off, but you can only participate in one revival each day. They give you some very good stuff if you keep doing them. That's all I got to say there, but anyways, I'm going to just sip and let this battle play out. Okay, so what that was was me using pretty much my deck in order to abuse weaknesses for the most part. Because fire is weak against water, water is weak against wind, wind is weak against fire, but light and darkness are weak against each other. But it's more than just that. 
as you notice, some had some little sword icons, and those are, are physical resistant icons. So you gotta try to use magic against them, and then it's vice versa for the other one. That's where you gotta plan things out. And the thing is, you do more damage in the front line than you do on the rear line. But the rear line tends to have a lot of support skills and whatnot, so you gotta pay very close attention to all that. But some attacks have some special effects, like some of them bo boosted up my stats. The last one clearly did, because it boosted my max HP. More than doubled it. But I didn't really need it because I kept one-shotting a whole bunch of stuff. Fafnir is very easy to take down. That's why I went for that one. But you keep doing it. You keep getting stuff in order to help you out or whatnot. You can do it once per day. As I said. Like, see, I got more Fafnir cups. But that's the main thing with that one. But, anyways. When you try to, um do those battles, pay attention to what your deck is, and that helps you out. And then, yeah, you get stuff for your guild or whatnot. When you do the conquests and all that, that tends to raise or lower your rank, because you're going up against other guilds, normally. But the United Front Battle, you work together, so yeah. Unfortunately, as I said, my guild's been dead for a while. The last message was, was like, recently, like, November, so yeah. But guilds work pretty much like a union, a whole bunch of people are working together. Yeah, I gotta change that, I got way more LR and GR now. Anyways, that said... There's not too much you can really do besides that. Now, when you go to the quests, that's where you tend to build up the TP to go back and fight. But, I was working on some Zodiac Shrine. As you can see, I can get another Sagittarius if I keep going through this. Zodiac Shrine takes a lot more AP than the other one, so keep that in mind. And I still got stuff to release. Capricorn, I still got someone else, I do believe. Nah, I don't. Let's see, I cleared Taurus ten times. But, um, that's the thing. You get start certain stuff in order to help you refill all that stuff. Like, look at how many AP potions I have. That's ridiculous. BP is just as crazy. These secret scrolls up your jobs. These ability resets is if you want to change something. Don't even try them. Unless you really need to. I don't know what these fake maiden guarantee gotchas are, but I get the feeling it's from the Blaze crowd. But... Yeah, that's mainly all the stuff I can really sit and break down for you for a quick little um breakdown. And trust me, this is quick because this game is way more intricate than you think. But that said, try your best to try and build up stuff, especially if you're a new player, because the newer players will have a harder time, but they still do everything on the list. You just have to participate in this game and both games as much as possible. AP Potions is definitely going to be your best friend, so get as many as them as you can get. You can get buy some from the gold shop, too, I do believe. No, not the gold shop. Well, yeah, gold shop does it, but that's the Taku gold. Bell shop is the one I was talking about. Because as you can see, I get a lot of them if I really want to burn out bells on those. Like, I can get another 19 halves. Which is very good. But you can also get gotcha tickets here, too. That will help you get some, some, um, some raid boss cards. But they all only go up to SR. So, yeah. But anyways, that's all I really have for this. Again, try your best to get stronger in this game because it's it's a long and tricky process. But when you get the hang of it, it actually does help. Otherwise, it's more, all more about participation. So the more AP potions you get, the better. I think you get one free, free refill every day too, so that helps. But anyways, that's all I really can do for this. I'll try to get another video with Kamihime Project on the other side, but... That's all for now, guys. Take care.